Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Last October, I sat in a room in Nashville with a bunch of the top teams from the US, Canada, and Mexico. And I brought these two up on stage to talk about branding. And many of my besties said that was one of the most interesting conversations around should an agent build a brand? If they're gonna build a brand, what does that brand mean? How do we implement it? So I've got uh, arguably the brand guy in all of real estate, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Davison of Thousand Watt. Thousand Watt, Mark, in the house. Good morning. This nice is like our here. third show. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Mark, for the people that don't know you, give them like a wee bit of background, and then we'll go to Jason over here. Uh, I co-founder of Thousand Watt, yep. uh, creative brand agency, real estate. Um, been doing this my whole career. Yeah. I uh, started with uh, musicians comedians building their careers not necessarily their brands but sure um kind of one thing led to another and then uh in the late 90s i uh moved to the west coast sold that company and got involved in the real estate industry right and uh have loved that ever since and you were back then like way back like brad emman reached out to you and said who is this guy writing all these nationally syndicated articles who i don't know about it wasn't me writing them. I was representing the writer. That's right. That's and I right. built his career. Yes. Uh, um, and so Brad invited me to help build the Inman right. business and build the Inman brand. I like how you take that very, like, just, you know, no big deal. Brad invited me to take over the company and run everything <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. and build the brand that we all now know as Inman. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Uh, yeah. So so give us an example for people um Context for like a typical project for a uh, thousand watt. Who who calls you and what do they want you to do? Well, it would be um, it would be anybody who has a problem. Yeah, that they recognize that as a problem mm -hmm. um, and realize that they can't solve that on their own. Yes, so they need outside help. Yes, and uh, that's not everybody in real estate. A lot of people in real estate feel that they can solve their problems themselves. Right. Um, so it starts there. Mm -hmm. And then we figure out like, well, how big is that problem and what is that solution going to cost? And then if mm -hmm. they have the budget for that, um, then it doesn't matter whether they're, we've worked with individual agents all the way up to the biggest companies right. in the industry. Um, so it's really about how seriously they take the solution or wanting that solution. So when I, Jason, when I think about their work, I think about um, some iconic moments yeah. in in the sort of history of the last 20 years in real estate and whether that was rebranding remax's website yeah. or it was taking an old brand like bh and g and bringing it back to life Big time. or or like mm -hmm. you know the dot loop story right that was a great one that was a that was an iconic yeah. moment and i think for the person that's listening right now um at the end of the day i believe you have to do something every 18 months that whether we can declare it as an iconic move is, is, you know, that's always, you know, questionable, but you've got to do something every 18 months to freshen your look, to, to bring something new to the marketplace, or you, you just, you kind of slide into, I don't want to say mediocrity, but, but maybe you become just a little yeah. less relevant in the minds of consumers mm -hmm. and agents or whoever it is you're trying to attract or retain his relationships. Is that a fair statement? It's a fair statement. I might disagree with it though. Well, well listen, if, there isn't, if there isn't some disagreements in this conversation, so, so, so Jason, we're going to, we're going to talk about like branding and a lot of agents come to you and they talk about branding. What do they come to you the most for? So when agents come to me, they're looking to mostly build, I would say a personal agent brand. They yeah. want to be known as the key figure in their marketplace mm -hmm. as King or queen, queen, king or king real estate. I can't talk today yeah. in their local marketplace. Not good timing for a podcast. I, Jason. I know yes. not good timing. Yes. And they're looking to build it through, through video, through lead gen, through social media and those types of channels. But it really has to do with building personal influence and building their business and their persona in the marketplace. Okay. So I didn't bring boxing gloves today. But I am you don't gonna need ask them. some. I just, you don't I'm need just them. messing with you. Well, we're talking about Chuck Liddell. <laughs> Is that a threat? Chuck, Chuck Liddell, your former, you know, neighbor. Yeah. Um, so so let's talk like the question is: should an agent build a brand? Should an agent, should a team, should a team ridge, should a brokerage? But you know, a lot of people are listening to this right now are probably in the agent team category. Should an agent team attempt to build a brand? Yes or no? Can I I want to roll back the tape a second. Go, go right ahead. Because yes. I, I slightly disagree with something you said, and I want okay. to clear that up. Okay, good. I think every 18 months is probably a good time to sit back and 
reevaluate. Right. But I think if you're building brand, the, every day you should be doing something. Yes. Okay. Just I want to be clear. I'm not talking okay. like change your logo, but I mean freshen things up. Like yeah. I'll give you the easiest term. Like we jokingly will take two agents' business cards and they'll both say that they're in luxury. One has a thick card stock and one's a flimsy card. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's very obvious which one has a luxury sensation to it and which one doesn't, right? So it could be something as simple as that. It could be something as simple as like, how many agents do we see? Like you, you get their card, you look at them, you get their card, you look at them, you get their card and you're like, I don't get it. Does, yeah. does your daughter, is she coming also? Yeah. Like, yeah. like the, 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 I'm going to say yeah. this very boldly, the lie that people put out on the visual to me, and then you show up, it's like your brand is lying from the get go. Do but you, most people don't get that. And that's a yeah. minor, minor, minor example, but it's an important one. Do you remember, this is years ago, in a small room somewhere where you and I were, yeah. with maybe 200 other, uh, we had asked who, who has a luxury yeah. business. Yeah. And so all the hands that went up, we asked them and collected business yeah. cards. Yeah. Yes. Put I them remember. in a hat and then called in one of the servers. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. asked them to, to get, just pull cards out and to tell us who, based on the card, sells luxury yeah and wow. they couldn't because it yeah. was all just like you said yeah kind of, well maybe they picked a couple yeah out of the hundred cards yeah, yeah. so this it's one's like, black and shiny this one's lined with gold <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly but i think we can diagnose yeah. the reason why d those decisions were made to do yeah. a flimsy card yeah which can draw some parallels between what we're talking about and distinctions maybe between what we're talking about yeah um so what was your question should, should an, agent, an agent build a brand not necessarily no, I think Jason. <laughs> I, I, no, so, so okay. I'm gonna. But okay. Why? But why? Well, why do you think, say that? I think agents should focus on building their business, okay, um, and building their career and establishing that brand is a. It's part of business, but yep. it's a whole separate thing. Yeah, not every agent's capable of doing that. It doesn't happen by accident or by default. Mm -hmm. It's it requires a lot of work. Yes, but building a, a, a reputable, you know, reputation and building a a business that recurs business every year, that also takes a ton of work. So to try to do both yourself is really, really hard. Okay, I agree. How do you define brand? And then well, I was going to his definition. This depends upon your definition of a yeah, brand. Yeah. So how do you define it? So in the world, like I live in the world of building agent, call them persona, call it an identity, call it a brand. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to get too nitpicky over the terminology, but really I want to build a known person in a marketplace or a team who people are like, oh, that's so-and-so. They're, they're the best agent or the mm -hmm. most known agent, the most recognized agent in the local mm -hmm. marketplace. Yeah. And with that does come certain branding standards, uh, mm -hmm. logos, designs, websites, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. certainly. Mm -hmm. um, I think it really would depend on how you define brand. But I look at a brand and I often define a brand in my own simplistic terms as your voice, your mind, your heart, your face. And I live in the world of personal branding. Say that faster so we can- Your voice, your mind, your heart, your face. <laughs> how was that? I did it. Yeah, yeah. I delivered. Uh, do you ever see uh, the show Taxi? I kind of missed you that one. You know the show. Yeah, remember, you remember uh, yeah, right. Yeah. You remember uh, Rever Hirsch. Reverend Jim, like yeah, yeah, yeah. taking his uh, test yeah. of the DMV. Yeah. Alex, what's the yellow light mean? He's like, slow <laughs> down. He's like, what? <laughs> so, yeah. so sometimes when I'm with Jason, I'm like, speed up. Yeah, wow. <laughs> your voice. Your voice, your mind, your heart, your face. Okay. I, I'm a big believer in personal branding. Yeah. Uh, to me, personal branding is the ability to create influence through who you are known through your marketing channels. Yes. I mean, that's a rough definition of it. Sure. Um, so I would look at somebody like a Glenda Baker. She certainly has a personal brand. She's known through TikTok, through her videos, through what she's doing. She's yep. recognized in her community. Yep. She's recognized in agent circles. Mm -hmm. And so I would argue that's a personal brand. And the thing people identify with in the brand is ultimately it flows through her. Yeah. So it's her point of view through her, what she speaks and what she says and her, her heart, expertise. Her mind, her opinions. Yeah, her face. Yeah. Um, like that's just for simplistic initial term, like that's how I would define like what I'm looking at when I think about personal branding. What's a brand? Well, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to say when this you go already, second. Yeah, this is yeah, already yeah, my no. favorite show ever. <laughs> yes. Okay, what is it? Then? No, but that's valuable. What, yeah. what you're saying is totally valuable. And I see like, uh, you know, I realize like we, we, we're living in times where we, where we are redefining words. Right. So like, you know. That's an understatement right yeah, now. Yeah, so sure yes. is. Like yes. Facebook is redefined yeah. friend. I disagree right. with you. Yeah. I just felt like saying yeah. it. No, good. No, <laughs> <laughs> I say that a lot. So like, I guess it, it sure, it, do, it depends on your definition of brand, but yeah. like when you're old school branding 
like where I come from, mm-hmm. it's got a, a singular definition and you don't like redefine it. It's what like luxury. It? Like if you start redefining luxury, yeah. well, then it may not be luxury anymore. Yeah. Like if you redefine luxury to mean a three bedroom, two bathroom fix me upper, but it costs $2 million in Oakland, California, is that mm-hmm. luxury? Yeah. Luxury is a price point. Well, not really. Luxury is something else. Yeah. Uh, it's a state of quality. It's something, it is something else. Yes. So what you're, to me, what you're talking about is super important, but that's like reputation. So Glenda, yeah. like what is she known for? The things that she's known for is not unique to her. What she's known for is shared by other agents at that caliber, probably throughout the marketplace. But I would argue that of any brand, like Starbucks is not uniquely known for coffee. So is Pete's, so but, is. But Starbucks isn't known for coffee. What are they known for? The Starbucks brand is known for being the third place. That's what the brand is about. That Starbucks was where you went to work when you didn't want to work in the office or work at home. It became the third place. Mm-hmm. It's where you would take meetings if you weren't meeting in in uh, in your office or so. Sure. Like that's what they built the brand on being the third <clears throat> place. So they mm-hmm. found this distinguishing characteristic or quality about itself that only it can own. Um, well, it's kind of an aligning story around which they build the business. That, so that like – the things you're talking about are fundamental. It, they're, they're like a rung on the ladder, but they're not the brand. The brand has to like transcend the service you provide. That's all to me reputation. But it has to get to another place where like that's that's what anchors in my head as – like she's the agent who is always on time or she is the agent that does this as opposed to the agent that sells the highest like quality real estate. Cause there's others in that. So like brand has to be unique to you that you own it completely. And I've used this example before, but like in the hotel industry, all hotels are buildings with rooms and beds and bathrooms. Right. But when you think about what the W owns, um, which is style, and vibe. Uh, well, you know, like Marriott doesn't own style and vibe. Marriott owns conference center, business mm-hmm. hotel, yeah. business hotel, business hotel. You know, so like they're, an- they're anchoring themselves in these categories. Yeah. Like car brands do that too. Volvo owns safety and Honda owns reliability and BMW owns precision engineering or ultimate driving and Mercedes sure. owns prestige and luxury. Like those those are things that to me, like I look for when you say, can an agent build a brand? It's like, yeah, if you want to figure out what you can own, what category you can completely own and domineer and then build connectivity around, then you get to branding. Couple of thoughts. Yeah. Um, You're wrong. No. Yeah, no, <laughs> start with I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I disagree. Yes. No. Yeah. yes. Uh, I think those things are true. I mean, I, I get it. To me, so like I would say, what's a brand? Um, a brand is the common story or the narrative around which a whole group of people who are building that brand can kind of anchor their beliefs, their principles, their values of how this thing, this business is to function, what it's all about. Um, we talk about Starbucks, we talk about Marriott, we talk about the W and so forth. I could argue, um, they don't own their own classes. They compete in their classes. And so I think it's intrinsically part of a brand that is going to compete with other brands that are in the same vertical, in the same columns of that vertical as they are. Um, I don't think Starbucks uniquely owns the third place. That might be the narrative that they anchored around to say that and to brand themselves to that. But that's like saying Nike owns all tennis shoes, for instance. They don't, but they can say things that are defining statements of belief in terms of how they represent and build their business. I would look at, let's go back to, I don't mean to make this podcast about Glenda, but to me, she's just so, she is iconic as an agent. In what, um, in what way? What makes her iconic? Well, that's what I was going to get to. Okay. So we can talk about like luxury agents. We can talk about uh, agents who are defined by a certain aspect of their service potentially. But what I find to be so interesting is um, I think real estate is and always has been a relationship business. Notwithstanding, I don't think people are hired based upon only their relationship. It's the relationship in tandem with some level of competence and expertise and other variables that a consumer would put mm-hmm. into the yeah. equation of making a selection. Yeah. Glenda is one of a kind. Like, oh, she's Glenda. That's like saying, oh, that's Ellen DeGeneres. That's mm-hmm. like saying that's- Madonna. Madonna, yeah. You know, Bowie. There is a certain quality that is attributed to the individual themselves. And that's why when I say like your brand is your voice, your mind, your heart, your face, in essence, what I'm saying is and this, I'm sure there might be a point of disagreement, but this is just for the spirit of the conversation. 
that we can say, okay, there's an aligning story around which a brand is built. But when I look at a personal brand, that person is the aligning story. And it is through the videos they make, through their marketing, through their content, that the consumer starts to figure out who they are as a person. Like there's only one Tom Ferry. There's only one Mark Davidson. Mm -hmm. um, I would look at like Mark, just for example, I would say, Mark reminds me a lot of Seth Godin. There are certain aspects mm -hmm. about the way you talk about marketing and branding that are just similar to me, but there's only one Mark Davidson. So I come to know him through that certain lens. If that makes, just, just kind of getting the conversation kicked along, that's where my thinking's at. So really, yeah, are we yeah. talking about, mm -hmm. if, you, if you think for the agent that's listening right now, I believe fundamentally, they're like, I just want to be A, recognizable, and B, I want to be on the consideration set primarily for the yeah. people that already know me, like me, and trust me. And then for the people that could get to know me, like me, and trust me, whether they're watching my content or reading a blog or listening to a podcast, or they saw just a just sold card and they just like my smiling eyes. So whether it's brand or reputation or just pick me, I think it's all kind of the same yeah. for the vast majority of people we're listening to or that, that are listening right now. Is that is that fair? I would agree it's Blend, fair. Blending yeah. the two? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. you're right. Like, Building the Nike swoosh is hard. Yeah. And it expensive. Yeah. And requires way more talent than the average person listening to this, myself included, right? To actually go out and implement that. And yet, most agents are lost in a sea of sameness right now. Right? I see the example all the time of like, walk down the potato chip aisle, and it's the same thing as going to realtor.com and trying to select an agent. All right. So on that note, and I wonder if we can reach agreement here because it's so competitive. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to build and and win on your face, on on facial recognition, sure, it's just not enough because like our personas, our faces change over time. Yeah, but like the one thing but, that, but not always on our pictures no, and our but cards. Like, but <laughs> I hedge my bet: voice, mind, heart, and face. Yes. Yeah, but all those yes. things change over time. But brands, they build – the foundational elements that build brand are supposed to stay intact for yeah. a long time. So like while things change and team members mm -hmm. can change, um, if if the core foundation of a brand, which is not the five things that you said that I can't remember. because <laughs> Say it fast. It comes out easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to me, they're built more around purpose and promise and vision and mission and execution sure. of those things because those are, are like structurally – like they're built so deep into the earth uh, of your brand, like they're mm -hmm. unmovable. And um, then, then when you have those things uh, and you're, you had said something also about it's, it's what all the team members bring into. Uh, well, I, I think I said it's the aligning story or narrative around which people anchor themselves to as sort of that central point of everybody agrees that the brand is. Okay. This. So I agree completely with that. It's not yeah. about your personal belief, because we have this at our company. You can bring a lot of own personal things to 1,000 Watt, but once you join, you have to adopt the 1,000 Watt belief system. Right. And if you can't execute that belief system or you wake up one morning and you don't feel like it, so you, you, you can do that as a personal, in my mind, a personal brand. Mm -hmm. You can be this today and that tomorrow. When you're a brand brand, and maybe what we're all talking about here is really just brand, not take the word personal out. Yeah. So well, Glenda yeah. Brand, may reputation. actually, you know, because yep. like, once once you track toward building that, it actually becomes a lot easier because you can take yourself out of it and you're building awareness and recognition around a thing. Right. Um, I, right. I would add this to that, like that oh. point of view. If you're a new agent or a solo agent or you're early on in your business, mm -hmm. I suspect, I know it would be very difficult to be very definitive about my principles are X, Y, and Z. My mission statement is this. I think that'd be quite a workshop to go through when you're inexperienced. And so I would offer encouragement to a new agent. Um, if you took the route of start making videos, start being an expert, start serving your customers, start being known in your community, Ooh, through that process, yeah. you will start to find what are the core values that define how I do business? Right. What does make me unique? And I think it'd be an iterative process of getting to a point where maybe you do hit a certain level of status in your personal business where you say, okay, it's time for a sit down. What is the anchor mm -hmm. for this brand yep. around which everybody builds? Does that make sense? It does, but I think you got to do it completely the other way. <laughs> I no, love no, no, but, but <laughs> this is great. But here's why. I love his I'm, mind. I'm going yeah. to go to the restroom. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> no, 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 but here's why. Because I think everybody, you, most people grow up 
um, and are taught like family beliefs. Mm -hmm. Like this is what you believe yes. as a family. This if you're going to go are. out into the yeah. world and be a fairy, you yeah. need to represent these beliefs. Yeah. So by the time you're ready to be an agent, I think you can sit down and jot down a handful of things that you hold dear. I, I agree with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's so let's start with that because when so I, we're, this is good because my question is, where does someone start? And I'll, I'll, so this is perfect. Because I wouldn't, I would not submit that you should start with no principles or no ideals. Yeah. And I, I didn't, I didn't yeah. take that. But like you were getting to like execution first, and I think you need to take a moment. I would call it discovery. But my discovery is like first discover like what do you what do you, what means everything to you? What is your belief system? What is your worldview? Whatever. Like what do you see out in the world that you have a a, a feeling about or a position about? Because that then becomes the content that you create. Okay. So like rather than just going out and – because here's what most agents do. They they respond to the that trigger of go create content. Yes. So what they do is they copy what other people have done. And so like that's how they start. By they're not, They don't have an original thought. They're doing what they've seen successful by other agents. Mm -hmm. Could I comment on that? Yes. I don't mean to – I don't no. want to block your train of thought. No. I'm taking I notes. find – like I mean if you look at like social studies just for instance um, – Kids learn through imitation. Yeah. Specifically, they learn through imitation of kids who are slightly above where they are, just slightly above. If they're too far gone, they have a difficult time grasping what they're doing. But if they're the next level and then the next level, it's something to chase. There's a built-in learning mechanism there. And I've also realized, because I, I teach a lot of, hey, here are the top five videos to make. And I give mm -hmm. those types of lists. Yeah. And then two months later, when I go to make my next presentation, I have a whole new set of samples. Here are the now the top five videos to make because... Mm -hmm it's impossible for somebody to truly rip off and duplicate verbatim. When they make a copy of what somebody else is doing, I have always found that they do something differently. They, they add them yeah. to the equation. Yes. So, you know, but you they're can, not clear what that them is yet. But that's the discovery. Yeah, so this is your, so, so how does somebody figure out, like, it, it's like my mentor Mike Vance said to me when I was like, okay, what is Mother Teresa, Jack Welch, what are they, what, like, Steve, what do they all have in common? He's like, they all answer the five fundamental questions and they live by them. And I was like, mm. and then he gives me the five questions. And then I spend the next year trying to answer them, trying to answer them in the most Tom Ferry real way possible. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until a year later. And then a year later, I left my dad's company. Mm. You with me? Like yeah, yeah. people are like, what, what? I'm like, it's because I got so clear on who I am, what I stand for, what, what do I value Right beyond just having company mission and value, like what do I value and what is the order of that, and then what is the dent I'm going to make on the universe, like like and that's just a like, but those five questions, yeah, those are fundamental to me. Right. So so what are the questions I really need to it's like the person listening right now? They're they're 15 years in the business. They're 15 days in the business, and they're like, yeah, like what do I really believe is important about home ownership, or what's my personal story. Or like, why did you about, get into, why did you get into real estate? And Cause go, I was watching million dollar listing and I, I want to be Ryan Serhan. Okay. So you know what? That's great. Yeah. And go and make as much money as you can. And yeah. don't worry about building a brand. Yeah. But if you got into real estate because you believe in something, yep. write it down, write down that belief. Great point. Just yes. write that belief down yeah. and then think about what are five things you can do to, uh, like disseminate that belief through whatever you create. Right. So I think those lists you're creating are great. Here are five things you should do. Just imbue them with, because the only thing that we have that we can really ca truly call unique to us are our belief system. So my belief system is me and like how I, so I, I use this early on. I, probably none of, nobody listening remembers this, but when I start 1001, I, I still have it hanging in my office. It's a little tear out note sheet of like a hand wrote 10 beliefs. Um, and one of them was to be really, really candid uh, in my compliments of real estate, but also the things that I find wrong with Critiques, real estate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you look back at our early, my early writing, our early writing as a group, me and Brian, like we were challenging so much. Right. But in 2009, we created this video, I'm Not a Lead. Do you remember seeing that? <laughs> yes. Um, yes. And we really called out like this whole mindset of like lead, which is still to everybody still generating leads today. Right. But the reality was like this was uh, sound bites from real people who want real estate to start viewing them as people, not leads. Right. Yes. Um, Boy, that that when I when we put that out, I had like thirty thousand views in, within a month, mm -hmm. um, and it resonated. But what it did was it positioned us. 
Now, we're the guys who are like calling shit out. Mm-hmm. We're the guys who are standing up and going, that's this is wrong. the year, by the way, he commented on one of my blogs and everyone thought he was tearing into me. But he was like, well, I don't understand, Ferry. What about this and this? You remember? That well, was that like, was based on my belief system right. to just try and call right. out good and or not good in real estate. Yeah. Yes. So, but you were amazing in how you responded to that and it came from a good place and we became good friends yeah. since. So I think as long as you jot down some, because if you can't jot anything down, well, then you're going to just execute, you know, Stuff. tactics without yeah. substance. Yeah. Well, it's, it's strategy yeah. versus tactics. Yeah, right? it is. Macro yeah. versus micro. Yeah. So, all right. So where does someone start? I think they have to acknowledge where they are in their business and their career. So mm-hmm. the first thing I have to do, like I can't map a destination until I map where I am today. Mm-hmm. So I think the questions you ask, like, why did I get into real estate? Do I have any wildly ambitious goals with real estate? Because maybe they don't. And maybe they're in a period of, I call it discovery, you might call it seeking or something along those lines, but maybe it's okay to give yourself permission to say, I am going to use what other agents are doing and try to make it my own until I can find my sea legs, so to speak. And then through that process, I'll put a calendar event a year from today Mm -hmm. to reevaluate what have I learned? What do I believe? Mm -hmm. How am I moving forward? Can I comment on that? Because I'm in a room surrounded by musical influences. Yes. So I don't know who said this, but it was said that a good musician or good songwriter borrows from other songwriters. It was Bob Dylan. Bob, a great songwriter steals from other songwriters. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Dylan. Okay. So like, uh, it might be Dylan. Oh, there's, there's he Dylan. He talked about ideas in the, in the air that he would steward the idea. Well, all, all the, everything that's been created has been created. Yeah, there's right? nothing new under the sun. So it's, it's your spin on it. So like to your point, and I'm agreeing with you, like, if you want it's to be, twice he said that. If, are we keeping, noted? Okay, uh, it's, two to, it's two to nothing. No, it dude, I just so you know, I watch your videos. I yes. follow you. Like I'm into what you're saying, um, and I think like if personal brand mm-hmm. is a goal that you need to set mm-hmm. for your customers, that's great. I would say that like if you you need to get there, sure. then maybe there's another level between personal brand and then brand brand. Yeah. I, I don't disagree then, at all. Yeah. So like that's, I think we're, you've, you can't get to here without getting to what you're talking no, about. No, and I think a lot of agents, when they're down here, this intimidates them because there's really no I understand for that. it. Yeah, it's yeah. hard as hell to build a brand. So is there an argument for or against, like when I reflect back on my early days of like my 2007 YouTube channel versus my 2009 YouTube channel, I was, it was ABT. It was just always be testing. Yeah. Throw, throw shit out there. See what resonates, see what, see what resonates. doesn't. And that, you yeah. know, you, you, I, I don't think I really, so this is kind of crazy to even think. I don't think we really refined it till this year. Like where I actually went narrow and niche and didn't, didn't care about how many views I got on a particular show, but I was more committed to meeting the needs of the individual that is wanting that information. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. How does that play into building a brand, creating a reputation, right? The building blocks of all that we're discussing here. I think that um, if you're in, if you're still in the process of throwing things out there to see what sticks, Mm -hmm. that means that you're searching for something. So I would say that you're not, you're not at the the brand level yet because a brand has a sort of a manifesto Mm -hmm. that it's working from. It knows exactly what it's And I want to be, I want to be clear, like 2007, then we, Figured it out 2009, but I think I refined it this year. I think you refined it sooner. Okay. I remember talking to you, so maybe it was seven years ago, because I remember exactly where I was. I was crossing the street from my building. I was in my car, sitting in front of my mother-in-law's house. And you had called me to ask me what the Tom Ferry brand represents. Yep, I remember. Remember that conversation? Um, And I wrote down systems for success. Yeah. Like to me, it all, everything that I have been observing, all plowed down to like that one thing that mm-hmm. you teach people systems. If you follow these systems, you will be successful. That was, yeah. That's what you were known for. Yeah. And I think in the last couple of years, you've really, uh, maybe it's a, all the, the contributing factors and the people that are yeah. all working towards this one thing or creating content that all points right back to that. And um, so like, that's clear to me. I now know where you fit in my mind. You're not just a coach. Yeah. Like Tom Ferry, the coach, yeah, that's a personal brand, but you're more than that to yeah. me. Yeah. So being like, I don't know Glenda, so I, I can't comment yeah. on her because she may be the Madonna real estate and really have a brand brand. 
Um, but a lot of agents are just like so-and-so, uh, the agent who owns a neighborhood, or so-and-so, the agent that sells high-end, but it's not mm-hmm. enough. That's like a utility. That's mm-hmm. that's the feature. I, I would ask I would the question. That, I would argue that's a good start for- It's a great start. I mean- Because I, yeah. I think there's an elasticity to branding. Mm-hmm. So like you can have large scale brands, but I think it scales down too. I mean, even if it's down to a micro area, but I don't want to, I don't want to block your train of thought. No, I think I was, I was nearing the, the train was near yeah, the train the, was at the, the, the final so, stop. So, but I want to go back and so, so, you know, here, here's Bob Dylan. Yeah. To whom Dave, we Dave, David, David Bowie, Bowie yeah. you know, and then over here I got Lou Reed, Iggy Pop, and Bowie, like so, you know, Jimmy, um, Darth Vader, my dog, um, Dog Vader. You, you look at all these these iconic individuals, and there's there's so many iconic individuals in the real estate space. I, I would argue that Dave Linegar is an iconic figure in real estate, right? Whatever you Change hallucinate, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. and and you know, you can look at Gary Keller. There's the no way, argument there. Bar- Barbara Corcoran. Yeah. Like, um, there's so many people that have done this. But every one of them did a little R and D, yeah. a little rip off and duplicate. Oh yeah, a little. Let me put my spin on this. Let me put my mm. flavor color I'm, of lipstick. I'm an on amalgam this. of like every great mentor that I've right. grown through. Right. But you know, like what I've learned to do is apply my own bingo, my own thing to it. So, so I think it'd be interesting for the person listening right now to to just write down either your first or last name and then put method behind it. Mm. Right. Mm. Like we 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 yeah. will debate now and then like. Should a team call themselves the Hoobie Doobie team or should they just be the Davison team, right? You know, the fairy team, right? Like using your last name and people are like, no, I think you need to have it if you want to be saleable. I'm like, I don't know. Barbara Corcoran did okay with Corcoran Group. Yeah. That was just her last name, ladies and gentlemen. Like yeah, it all Barbara, worked out. Barbara said she didn't call it the Barbara Corcoran Group. I know. She called I know. it Corcoran. But that's what I was saying. Like if you had your last name method, right? Back to this point is I think you you should list out like, Everything that you do that you believe is unique or special in your local marketplace and have that like, this is the shit that I do. This is what I stand for. This is how I serve my clients. This is my process. Because if we look at consumers Uh today, yes, you look fantastic. And yes, you've sold some houses. But do you have a plan to help me buy a house? And most agents Mm -hmm. don't have a plan, right? I mean, I'm going to put you in the MLS and I'm going to show you shit that's already sold. You with me? Like, yeah, yeah. so having a method, having, I think it's, it, it goes to the question I want to start with, which is we talked about like, where does somebody start? And then I started thinking like, what are the building blocks? So what are the building blocks? How do, how, what are the, what are the essential things I've got to have in place, quote unquote, to have a I reputation? Think it's a combination of the two things that we're, that yeah. we okay, both let's, own. Let's map which it is out. your five things that I can't remember. Face four. four. Yeah. Um, face, your face. Voice. Your voice. Mind and heart. Sounds right. cute, doesn't it? I'm going to, can I yes. reinterpret those yeah. to come up with a new list yeah. that is a perfect combination of Yeah, the let's do it. So to me, face is not your physical face. Mm-hmm. The face is the identity that you present to the world. Could I, I want to add to that if I could. Yeah, please. We're, we're building something so, together here. So I think it depends on who the person is. Um, there are some people who want their face to be recognized and yep. that's fine. Yep. But like, I'm actually thinking about companies like uh, Keeping Current Matters. Mm -hmm. Keeping Current Matters is trying to be more of a brand that is not one person in particular. Correct. Necessarily. How do you move away from Steve Harney? Right. And develop. Well, they moved away from Steve Harney because it's really David Childers. Like David is, is, and then you got Bill, who's the CEO, who most people have no idea who he is. And and that's by design. Right. That's by his design. Clayton from Housing Wire, same thing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Great CEO, huge, you know, sort of, you know, Inman housing wire, but no face. Yeah. But, but I would but agree. There's identity. An identity. Identity. So identity is not logo. It's an all encompassing. It's, it's yeah. behavior. It's actions. It's like your participation in the world. To me, that's face. Yeah. Um, I think agents always interpret it as like that's my physical face. Yeah. And maybe there's something to that, but th- there's more to that. Like the face has to. If I see your face, I need to think of something. Like what does that face trigger yeah. for me? Yeah. So I think it's about behavior and action and like your participation as a entity yeah. in the world. Voice is um, what we call in brand building tone and voice. So that is what like your mean? it's that's your lexicon. Uh, it's the words you use. So it. It means if you want to be a brand. That's bananas. Okay. <laughs> Lexicon. Uh, uh, what's on the other side of it? Let's go. Let's go. Okay. This was just at a virtual event. Oh, okay. I still, it I says Lexicon, yeah. surprisingly. Yes. yes. But like building out a vocabulary of terms yeah. that you use. Yeah. Um, 
Because you, you my were, language, my my like we know like every community, every culture, right? Every tribe. There's a, a language unique set of, yeah. of words that they use that you're like, oh, I'm in the Tom Ferry ecosystem. So in other words, like, you can't say that like, you know, people mean everything to me, but then at the other side of the table, you're talking about lead generation because that's not people. Yeah, there's that. Right. So like right. it's being very conscious of like how you phrase things, how you write copy, mm -hmm. you know, what your grammar is, what your flow is, just how you sound like in the world. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I would call voice. <laughs> My voice is misspelling. Almost everything. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, if you're out there listening, my chief copywriter. No, I'm not. Like, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a little sloppy with my spelling yeah. too. So what's uh, what's mind? So mind is like that's the I think that like that's that gets into worldview. Mm -hmm. That's your soul, heart and soul, the things that you talk about. Mm -hmm. But like heart and soul has to be based on something, you know, important. Like what do you believe in? Mm -hmm. um, and like I don't know if I've ever talked about the Grateful Dead on your show before, but like out of all the bands ever, the Grateful Dead had a brand that was bigger than, bigger right. than any other right. brand, uh, except for maybe the Beatles, because it was based on a belief system that they had about music. Mm -hmm. And Jerry used to always say like, once, once we play it, it belongs to the world. Right. So he allowed taping. Yeah. And the Grateful Dead even provided um, sections of their, of their, audience where tapers were allowed to go and set up their microphones and mm -hmm. tape their shows mm -hmm. and distribute their shows because yep. he believed the music belonged to the people. Yeah. So they activated. So like, but that was based on a worldview and that, that mindset yep. played into how they acted in the world. So they're yep. all tied together. This was me deciding I'm going to give all my content away for free. Yeah. Right. Back in like 2007, eight, nine, 10 and getting phone calls from Amen. competitors yeah. saying, what are you doing? You're destroying the industry. Yeah. And I was like, or I'm helping it. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Or I'm trying to reach more people. I'm evolving it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not waiting for somebody to come to one of my seminars. I want to put it out there. And to that point, so I would also say that mm -hmm. along with that idea of mind, to me, somewhat encapsulates your competence, your expertise, right. the actual thing you're your, doing, your insight, service. your knowledge, yeah. your ability to transfer skills, right? Especially in, in this day and age of buying a house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I love that. So this is also strategy, tactics. Yeah. That's it's, the secret sauce. What's on the, some level? What's um, that one? Heart. Heart. I wonder if that belongs under I, I I think we were conflating them a little bit. Yeah. 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 So to me, mind is more the, like, look, I always, I ask the question of a lot of agents lately, what do you sell? And it's kind of a loaded question. Mm -hmm. And what we've arrived at is in a very simple sentence, you sell your expertise and the means by which you convey that expertise. Um, ultimately, you're a service-based business. You're a transaction facilitator, a broker. We can find lots of words to mm -hmm. describe it. But to me, mind is, how are you going to help me do the thing I'm trying to do? The consumer asks, buy, sell, invest, whatever it is. How are you going to help me do that? It's with your mind, which could include experience, but it also includes mm. competence. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. So Three. that, that all feels three, three Agreed. to nothing. <laughs> three to nothing. No, I'm just playing. I've only okay. said, I don't disagree. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> playing a power game. We, we agree yeah. repeatedly yeah. with you, Mark. All right. So, so then I don't is, like that. I like to be disagreed with. Uh, I disagree that you disagree with that. Well, All good, right. because that's And really I also good. disagree with the disagreement. <laughs> okay, uh, what is heart then? So heart is the passion. Mm -hmm. That's like how, exactly. it's the passion that you put. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, I won't name names. I'm trying to buy a house. Um, and it's very- Do you need a good real estate agent? Well, I, I thought I had a good yeah, one. Yeah, you need a Tom Ferry client, um, by the way. And then I- realized I didn't. Yeah. And then I went to a, a second this is that, one. That house that you were talking about. I didn't, didn't get work that out. House. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, and so when I went down there, like I reevaluated my situation, mm -hmm. um, met the person and realized like they were really just a, a really good agent that sells a lot of real estate. Mm -hmm. um, long story short, by accident, by a complete quirk of the universe, I met somebody who was already planning her exit out of real estate. But when hearing my situation, she said, I'm going to help you. And I promise you, I am going to find you a house. This is in an insane market mm -hmm. where homes are uh, like many markets. Where yeah. It's just like whatever you bid, you're going to get outbid. Yeah. Um, so she made me this promise straight up. I promise you. She goes, I promise you that I will find you your house. And I'm going to find it for you before a certain date. Um, unlike the other two agents, she was 
driving around. She was whatever. I don't she know. Had a plan. And she here's had a plan. how. Yeah. And yeah. here's how. Mm-hmm. Well, long story short, we're we're closing uh, before the date, mm-hmm. uh, which is this Friday, this coming Friday. She fulfilled that promise, and I think like this is a really important in branding to be able to make a promise because people like certainty. People like guarantees. Mm-hmm. Some of the great, all the great brands. In some way, shape, or form, whether it's like FedEx that promises to get the package overnight. When you absolutely need it. But you count on that. Mm -hmm. So if you could make a promise, Mm -hmm. which is very hard for real estate agents and brokerages to do, is to make a a promise with absolute certainty that they can back. But if you can get there and deliver that, like this is a woman who really, she is so uh, understated works for a, a tiny, tiny little brokerage that is on no one's radar, mm-hmm. was already planning to get out of the business because she kind of doesn't need to be in it given her financials and her family's financial situation. She went to work and worked harder because of some belief system that she had, okay. some some heart. Heart, heart and mind, and she made a promise, she kept to it, and so, like, she now lives in my world, not as a great agent, but as somebody who I can depend on, right. somebody who says what they mean. So there's a lot of talk about, like, creating a brand promise, mm-hmm. right? And it's the hardest thing to do. It's, I was just going to say that, thank you, because it's uh, like, like, what I don't need to see is another business card that says trustworthy. Right, that doesn't mean anything. Or, or you know, promise is kept. Like I actually used to, when I would get those cards, I would say, if you really want to kill it, you should put on here. We're number two. We try harder. Right? Like Avis, I thought Avis did a remark. Like we're not number one, but we will work our face off to, to help there. you. Yeah. And, and and like I think the that typical, always worked against them. Not to break. I know. Train of I know. Thought, I know. But, but like, I would show up at the Avis desk, yeah. and and I would ask a cry. They go, we can't help you. And I would always you say, try harder. You need to try harder. <laughs> <laughs> but but you. <laughs> but my point is like having that sort of uh, so catchy, stupid word, right? That doesn't that means a million things to a million people and something to you, and it's not clear when you say integrity, honesty, values. Those are trustworthy. Values. You know, right? I don't believe in values. I, yeah, I, I, I disagree with you. I think you believe in values. You don't believe in marketing values or having that as the center stage of like. Well, I think you should have values. Yes. yes. I think what your agent did that was fascinating is she said, I promise. And then she had a very specific promise that was, that was contextual to the market. Before, uh, by this date. Yeah. From X to Y. And I was questioning it the whole time. How are you going to. Right. How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? Is this just empty words? There was a. There's a two-sided question that I heard once that I just always love, and I think it's useful when you're trying to ask, like, what is, contextually, what is the promise I'm going to make? Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, what are you writing? Oh, I'm making oh, values. Promise. Okay, you're good. Um, it's, what's the problem my customer has that they don't want? Right. What's the result they want that they don't have? And I yep. call it X marks the spot because yeah. the answer is the same. Yeah. But it goes from a positive mm-hmm. or a negative spin. Mm-hmm. And I think what your agent did is more or less, she realized, what's the problem facing Mark? The problem is, that the market is so darn competitive, no matter what he bids on, he's going to lose out. And so he needs an agent who's willing to go the extra mile beyond what any other agent would do to yeah. get him a house. Mm-hmm. And she fulfilled that promise. And I'll tell you what she did. Because like most people, you look in the price range you could afford. Mm-hmm. So the price range I could afford uh, is not a real price range. No, it's because, fake. Because all these this agents- This is an auction. Are, right. Yeah, it's auction. Right. So what she did was she found a home for me that had- uh, Many of the things that were really important, like space, land, mm-hmm. and views. Yep. But she found something that was, I wouldn't call it a teardown, but it was in need of a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, but she has a crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she has she, a plan. She has a plan. So she came to me and said, this house Rapid. has all of yeah. the, all it needs is just to have the whole inside redone. But I could end up with more than what I wanted for less. Of based course. on so mm-hmm. it wasn't like she just manufactured something out of thin air like mm-hmm. she just just approached it differently okay so here's the i'm i'm being the listener right now tell me if this is your question mm-hmm. in the comments how do i scale that how do i how do i turn that into something because if you just start saying to every presentation i promise i'm going to get you a home like that's not what we're talking about no here. you can't start from a promise no. promise is the very last thing right you start from a, a core belief system Okay, so we got that part down. So what are some of the building, what are the key assets? 
So I wrote this down because I wanted because mm -hmm. I said it and I want to tackle this. You're like, I'm not answering your question, Ferry. Like Let's most, go to this one instead. Most people have core belief, core yes. values. Yeah. And when I said I don't believe in values, I don't believe that you can execute values. I think values all sound good, integrity, honesty, sophistication, but they don't right. mean anything. Right. So when somebody says, well, honesty is my core value, I always say, well, what does honesty mean? Give me an example of mm -hmm. what being honest is. And whatever they say, I go, that's a belief. Yeah. Write that down. Yeah. Because like um, values are just, most real estate companies all share the same value system, but you don't really see them executed properly in the world. So I think having beliefs and creating those, mm -hmm. it always, it is like the main foundation. Yeah. So you do the, we believe. The we, we believe. In we this, believe that we every believe. client matters. You know, we believe that, you but know. But that, that's not as strong I'm, enough. I'm, yeah. I'm just, yeah. you know, we believe, we believe, we believe. Exactly. Right. And it's those things, you now look at those things and go, how do I activate those beliefs? Mm -hmm. So yeah. like I, I would go, so because I'm a brand agency, I would look at beliefs. I would also mm -hmm. look at something I call attributes. You mm -hmm. mentioned those things earlier. You didn't call them attributes. You yeah. just referred to those as things. Yeah. Um, but you actually create a list. And we typically create a list of three to five really strong, clear attributes that sum up the persona of the group, yes. of the brand. Um, we then look at those attributes. Um, they have to be tied to the beliefs. So if you believe in certain things, your attributes need to express that. And then we consider two things. Does your name, like Bill Smith, articulate that in any way, shape, or form, or could it? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you get, so here's an example. Uh, we had a call from a team back when we weren't doing teams, and they wanted to hire us to say, we don't really work with teams. That's our thing. We don't work with teams. They're hard to do. Yeah. So you can't convince me to do it. Um, I got, she convinced me. But here was the thing. They were called uh, the Michael Silva, no, the Michael Williams team. Yeah. Um, Michael Silva was the, uh, the sort of the rainmaker of the team, uh, but he went with Michael Williams as a brand name. My reality around that is I'm talking to the three women that run that company. He's just out a there. Figure. Just figure. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't see how you can build brand around Michael, a, a, a guy's name when it's three power women running it. Like yeah. you're going to need a different name. Yeah. And she said, then give us one. And that to me was like, I can work with that person. They're now mm -hmm. open. Yeah. Um, and so what we built for them was a brand name. They're based out of Houston and we call them Happen Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause they're, they're kind of like, they build houses as well as sell. They're making things happen. So like mm -hmm. that name embodied like the character and the soul. Mm -hmm. So I think like all those things should tie together. And the one last piece that I want to add to this is, you really need to understand who your customer is. Like who yeah. is your primary customer? If you're willing to work with anybody, then you're going to probably yeah. alter yourself mm -hmm. and your beliefs uh, to make it work for everybody. But if you're really clear who your primary customer is and radiate your thing, you will pick up more of those primaries right. uh, and you'll deliver a better service to them. And you also attract people that want to be that. Do you know what I mean? Like, you do that. I know. You do that. I know. You do that. Like, but, uh -huh. but a lot of people, so if you're listening right now, first of all, I'd love comments about this because um, this is a great debate amongst agents and teams and brokerages. Like, well, no, I want to attract everybody. Yeah. And my response is, well, then you kind of have to live with what it is you attract. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you're like, my ideal client is ABC, it's a millennial buyer who's 27 years old, who's got a FICA score of 710 who, you know, wants to get a deal because her parents put her hands on her and said, well, we bought a house, we got a deal, but, you know, needs to understand today's yeah, market. Like, yeah. you go super deep. You're like, that's my avatar. Now, how do we serve that person? What are her yeah, problems? Right. What are her challenges? And how do we build a system around that? Then, you know what? You attract a ton of those people and people that kind of identify like that. The 55-year-old the that's like, I want to be 27 year again, right? So I'm going to dress that way yeah, and look yeah. that way. That's my experience. But I'm curious for the person watching, what's your, what's your take? Should we try and attract everybody or should you have a little more narrow niche? I think the more, the more narrow you, your niche is and the more you continually repeat what you're great at with the people who regard that greatness, the mm -hmm. better, the greater you get at what you're great at. Right. But if you keep doing this and that for the old, then you're never perfecting yourself. Yeah. So like I'd like to say, and I can say this, that, because of the way in which we onboard people, 
we have great cli- – every client is great. We don't have a problem client because mm-hmm. we're attracting like-minded because yeah. we're all like kind of – beating the same drum. And, and there's a word that we haven't used, which I bet you can talk a lot about, which is community. Yeah. Um, if you're True. a really good brand, if you're a brand, you'll, you'll build a community. You'll have yeah. community, not just customers or yeah. not just clients, yeah. but you're cre- you, you both have built fantastic communities. So I'm mm-hmm. trying to build a community yeah. around us. We have, I'd say people that respect us and like us, but I don't know that I've created a community. I'm now you trying to get to back do to doing turn on again. We're going to, we're, I'm not officially announcing it on your show, but I'm not unofficially saying that we're not going to do it. You didn't hear it here first. I, you didn't, I didn't say anything. <laughs> but, uh, I disagree. I, uh, <laughs> yes. But it's going to be, we're going to yeah. do a, a turn on, but it's going to be for our community. So yes. if you're a member of the community, yes. you get to go. Yes. But like, I think if you, if you're tracking toward building something mm-hmm. more, it's quite possible that Glenda's whole business is probably repeat business, recurring business. Um, of clients that are all similar and are all revolving around the son that she is. Now, how she did it, I don't know her. Mm -hmm. But just based on what you're saying, my guess is that she's hit all these things, right? And and she's also, as many people have experienced now, as they create more and more content and find their tribe and find their community, you know, they could be all over the world, right? Like I have clients in 29 countries now, right? So like they're not deeply... Like, like they can't come see me on a Tuesday. Yeah, like yeah, other people, yeah, maybe in the yeah. U.S. can and in Mexico can, but they're in it. She's found this, as so many others have, and they get agent agent referrals. They get like, I need you to find me the you know Glenda in Alabama. The yeah. find me the Glenda in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So she represents this. She's ideal. an archetype. Right? Yeah, she's an archetype. Yeah. They're like, I want that. I want that kind of person to represent me. I would also go if I could go back yeah. to your 2007 versus 2009. Mm-hmm. And then later, the evolution of your uh, your YouTube channel. Yeah, I first, like I just totally like tore apart my own channel. Like, no, I, I agree with first. I, I agree with Mark. Like, hey, we're, we're doing okay here, Schleppo. Yeah, doing great. <laughs> yeah. First, I agree with Mark that you you had defined a groove that was right for the time. Yeah. Years, years, years ago. Yeah. And you have continually evolved it because like a continuum is an act of balancing, and right. as forces change, you have to maintain balance. Yeah. And that's the nature of marketing. Like this. Mm-hmm. And I think there's an important um, sort of contrast here. Like a brand, you should at some point, I agree, get to a set of beliefs that you operate by that are unchanging, unwavering, because they're core to who you are and what you're doing in your business. However, your marketing mix is going to evolve all the time. You should be totally calling, you should be yeah, like, 1, and your YouTube, like your yeah. YouTube channel mm-hmm. is a marketing channel. Right. And of course you went into the playground to test and see what works. Mm-hmm. And then you aligned it to the anchor of the brand. So it's strategy versus tactics. Yep. And so I think I would say to an agent who's earlier on, um, and this is, I'm asking a question just to, for my own purposes, is it okay to do marketing without a brand? Yes, of course it is. And I think it's required. Yeah. I think, I think it's required. It, it, my it, it, my yeah, definition yeah. always is marketing is the stuff you do to get people to buy what you sell. Branding right. is the thing you do to get people believe in your marketing. Yeah. And, and I believe that you cannot learn your brand. Yeah. I think you can start off to your point. Like you yep. start off with beliefs, like you start off with them, but don't get so married to them in the beginning because until you get the feedback of the perception of customers and you hear their stories and you see, wow, I really do excel when others don't here, you're not going to see the opportunity until you get to that point. So I think marketing is that flywheel of continually balancing and trying to find things that work, sell your product services through video, through YouTube, through whatever. And then in that, I do think it'd be important that you set, maybe it's an annual revisiting of our marketing. How did it work? What worked? What didn't work? What did we learn? I'm thinking about the beliefs that you were talking about. And I think there's, uh, you can probably trick your brain a little bit into asking a different set of questions to see if you can't really get to it. Like, and it depends on how you're wired, but like if I said I refuse blank, and then that might yeah. trigger somebody to like paint the negative space of what they're against. Because sometimes it's really hard to say I believe in X, Y, and Z, but it's not as hard to say I'm totally opposed to X, Y, and Z. Yeah, and then through point. that, find yeah. your way into the mm-hmm. actual belief. There have been clients or prospects that have come to us that we have said to them, "You're too soon. There's no brand. There's nothing. There's nothing here." Yeah. So go build a business and do what you're suggesting yeah. is just find your way, find where you, there have been less examples of somebody that's come to me at the start, but has such a clear sense of what they stand for and what they are. So, so there's no right or wrong. There's just what, what works best for you. 
Um, yeah. so and I think like, this is, this reminds me of, uh, start with why. Yeah. And everybody got, it's a great book. I mean, yeah. brilliant book. I'm a huge fan of Simon Sinek's, but I believe it created a lot of business owners who were like, I can't start anything or do anything until I define until my I why. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, no, go sell why a house. Is, it go make some money. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, it doesn't have yeah. to be enormous. It can right. be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. It could um, be. I was burned in a bad transaction. I want that to never happen again. Yeah. Or it was really hard for us to buy a house. Or the agent that sold us a house was completely stupid. If they can do it, I can yeah. do it better. You know, when you think about some of the unicorns that have blew out of real estate over right. the last 10 years, they, there's a reason why. Mm -hmm. It's not just because they were run, like I think of Dot Loop. Yeah. Like Austin's an amazing guy. He's yeah. an amazing leader, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, Austin built Dot Loop based upon an experience right. and a belief Remember Michelle Cerro? Of course. Oh, okay. I was just talking to the CEO of Realtor.com who, oh, we bought that company. He's the new. Yeah, but you know what? And app. they buried her swipe app, which is like. I know. Like they never should have. doorsteps. The doorsteps experience was yeah. beautiful. So I like, got to reach out to Michelle. These people. Michelle, if you're listening, this is why I called you. I don't know that she's listening, but <laughs> we, we can text her. But the thing is like so many great, like Remax blew out of a belief system right. that Dave had that right. like professional real estate agents need a more professional reality. Right. Um, and, and so like, I'm still, I'm never going to abandon my mm -hmm. sense of like, yeah. just write something down, yeah. write something down because what do you like. stand for? If you just you can look at it and go, you know what, maybe I should not put an ad on a bus stop bench in a shitty part of town because mm -hmm. like that will because that will live with you for a long time. Like mm -hmm. just if it keeps you from doing things as opposed to like giving you ideas on what to do, that's still really great. OK, I would argue with you that um, that the bus bench as a primary tactic, thinking you're going to get business from that is hilarious. It's hilarious. Yeah. But when you. I'll, I can take a case study of one of my clients. So they have all of realtor.com market VIP. They have all of Zillow. We're doing 40 to $50,000 a month in Google ads. And we, we were trying to build such an unpenetrable, hmm. you know, fortress that dig the deepest moat possible. And then we we're like, we should do billboards. And even though billboards are hard to track and hard to measure, and you know, even the, even with a QR code, you really don't want somebody yeah, driving down yeah, the street yeah, and trying yeah. to. Yeah. But but they're like they see their name, they see their it's face, and they're impression. like they're like I'm online, offline. So like to me, the, the bus bench is uh, Andy C saying totally. Uh, you know what, man? I just I got so Andy did like uh, almost a billion dollars in sales last year as like a, a small team for Intero Real Estate, mm -hmm. right? And kills it in his marketplace. There's two billboards in town. He took them both. He took the three schools in his community, including the, the elementary and the high school that he went to, and he sponsors everything. Some of those are just become like these almost like brand defensive positions. Like we're just going to be everywhere because it's so low cost. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Um, I think it's really great for name recognition. Right. I think uh, there are two ways to play that. Sure. You can put your name on a billboard and, and get name recognition, mm -hmm. or you can put a message Yes. On a billboard. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. We uh, were asked to help a client come up with ads for the billboards mm -hmm. in and around um, military housing. Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't remember all of the concepts I came up with, but one of them, one of them was something like, we'll help you live at ease. And at ease is a military, yeah, a military term. term. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a and Good. so we'll help you live at ease. And then it had their, their brand it's name. Very clever. That is. Yeah, they rejected that. What? Yeah. They rejected that. And they went with their name. Yeah. <laughs> just, we sell houses and their name. Well, somebody just got a free idea. Right. Okay. Like so. versus like when it's PCS season, you know what I mean? Like the, that's like the military. Yeah, like, like that's when they, when they, here's your orders. And you go back to your spouse and say, uh, I'm moving in 30 days. We need to figure out how we're going to sell our house and move and blah, blah, blah. Like, all that stuff. I'm going to give you one that I love. Um, I'm looking at my crew. Do you guys ever see, I think it's off the 35. Um, it says, I hate Steven singer.com. Do you guys see that billboard? Right. So when I first moved to Dallas, I'm like, who is this Steven singer? Like, and who's the like horrible person that's like running ads like this, like, like this, is, the, this right? is a troll deluxe. Then, is right? that a jeweler? Is he a jeweler? Of course. Yeah. And then I go to it. It's like, you know, like I hate Steven Singer because yeah. I, I walked in to buy a one carat diamond and walked out with a five. I hate Steven Singer. Right. It's, it is so hysterical. But you know, when you see a billboard that's been up that long, yeah. it's working. Yeah. Yeah. 
right? And so, it's tied so to I a like me- it's tied to a message and a story. So, like, I guess the the difference is the name sells utility. Yes, like blank blank realty sells houses. That's right. utility. Right. The, we help you live at ease sells a worldview. It sells a exactly. belief system. Yeah, and I think like. Both have their merit. They do. Totally. Yeah. I would also argue, I mean, one of the things I talk about with a lot of my clients is I call it connective tissue marketing. It's not the main stuff, mm-hmm. but it's like your Google display network ads, right. bus benches, right. Right. the shopping cart ads, things like the that. TikTok that, just, that is pinned to the top. Yeah, that just is a really reminders. good message. It's had a million yeah. views and like, oh, okay, that's yeah. who that person is. It's top yeah. of mind. It's brand reinforcement. Yeah. So like you should have some major like rocks versus pebbles, major rocks mm-hmm. in your marketing, your yeah. video strategy, social media, your email list, things mm-hmm. like that. And then all the little connective tissue that just reinforces like your, that. your brand. I like that. And I also there's yeah. also a principle called the frequency illusion, which is a psychology principle. And I'm not a psychologist, but I think it has a lot of application. Basically, what it would say is if I get a postcard from an agent, let's say I get it once a month and I've been in a neighborhood, I get it like every month for like a year or two. But that's the only marketing I ever received from them. That's case A, but if case B is I have a realtor who sends me a postcard, let's say once a quarter, Mm -hmm. but I see their billboard every time I drive by it, and I also see their ads in the shopping carts or on display network ads or like one other channel. This frequency illusion, it creates an illusion that I may see less of your marketing, but because I see it in a variety of formats, multi-channel, it actually creates an illusion that I'm seeing it more often than I really am. And so with my clients, I work very, like I want to create a web. How do I kind of encircle you Mm -hmm. with some different forms of marketing? Mm -hmm. Some are rocks, some are pebbles, but they're all there working together to create this dome around your marketplace where you own it. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. All brands do that. All brands, Apple, they all have marketing. Right. They're all selling things and trying to sell things, but they also imbue spirit into Mm -hmm. that other side of it called yeah, which is like branding. sparks and gasoline right there. Right. When you can like when you can have that think different yeah. kind of campaign message, again, that's a high standard to achieve. Not everybody's going to rise up to that level of. I, I think your live with ease or at ease. Excuse me, I did it wrong. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's brilliant. I don't think it's a requirement. No, it's not. And we oftentimes will tell a client, "You don't need," but we track to that. If there's a campaign that could be birthed out of what we're doing. We want to give that campaign a slogan to rally. See, here's the thing. And this is also gets to psychology, which I too am not a psychologist, but I've studied this like crazy right. because branding is all about psychology. It is. And it gets to like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And you and I, and we've talked about this, yeah. um, but more and more people. So I have met people who are Tom Ferry people mm-hmm. and they kind of walk and talk and sound like you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what's happening there? They're seeing a bit of themselves in you. Yeah. And so by being part of you, they are allowing that part of themselves to come out more and to grow. And that's making them feel – so that gives them a sense of belonging, being part of you. Community. Mm -hmm. But like growing through Mm -hmm. you, community. So by growing through you, they're gaining more confidence and self-esteem. Right. So this is critical. People will never find self-reflection – through like intellect, through intellectual connectivity, through meaning, through reason, like reason and logic and features. What people find and look for, they're not thinking about it, but they're drawn to it, are, are brands that reflect some aspect of themselves. They see themselves in it. So when I, I look at what we're all wearing or mm-hmm. what we're driving, mm-hmm. there's reasons why we've made those choices. Sure. Because like when we step out of our Porsche or we step out of our Mercedes, we're just broadcasting something to the world. Mm-hmm. When we're wearing a certain type of shoe, we're saying this is what we – this is the tribe we align with. This is our how we represent ourselves. Yep. So if your agents that you're working with can find that other layer to where they can radiate out that internal core, they're going to find people who go – like there's a guy in my marketplace. His name is Billy Grippo. Yeah. I know that name. Great last name. A Grippo. But he's on every bus stop bench, Mm -hmm. smeared with graffiti and smeared with like garbage that- Welcome to Portland. Welcome to Portland. (laughs) I will, I I don't know who Billy is. All due respect to Billy. I will never hire him ever. He would be the last choice I would ever make. And even though I know his name, there's nothing there. He's just a name on a bench or a name on a billboard. Billy Grippo sells Portland. Um, And so like there has to be like to your point, uh, 
sparks and and fire, yeah, rocks and pebbles, story, connectivity, connectivity, all the it's I, yeah, it's, you it's, it's a, the ICU everywhere illusion or or and truth here's that what we that means. Create. It's well, kind of, and, yes, yeah, and, because if I see you exactly. in all the wrong places, then you're making it a very clear signal that I should avoid doing business. With yeah, you. exactly. So I hear your point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. What is this? This question popped in my mind. We talked about communities and the importance mm -hmm. of building a community. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it's easier because you made the comment about people can see a part of themselves in Tom and then that part comes out a little bit. Do you think it's easier to build a community around a person versus a non-personal brand? Is it, uh, is it, is it, is it easier? I don't Easier may be the wrong verb. Yeah. I don't know because like Gary V is built and in many ways, Tom, you've built, mm -hmm. although I'd say in the beginning you built it around you. But it, it, like you dropped the coach, you became yeah. more than coaches. Yeah. Tom Ferry now represents, it's, a, it's an entity. Mm -hmm. Tom Ferry is the name of an entity. And now you're part of that entity. Yeah. So you're no longer out there just being Tom. You're, you've, you've now folded yourself into your entity. Mm -hmm. um, it's the clients, it's the coaches, it's the teammates, it's, it's the, the ecosystem. community, it's the ecosystem. Yeah, it's the whole, it. so like that's the brand, yeah. is that whole entire ecosystem. But, but, then, but then look at like what Greer Allen has done at Boomtown. Yeah, right? it's you true. Go to, you go to Boomtown true. Unite and like it's They're funny. diehards. Right, like there's literally people inside that organi like organization in their community that are like, who's Greer Allen? Yeah. Right now we've known Greer forever. Greer was just in the office a couple of days ago, right? Like he's been a pal for a um, you know, millennial, but the reality is like, that's a like Salesforce. Yeah. Yes, of yeah. course. Benioff is there, but we're not really the there to biggest... see Benioff. We're really there because yeah. Salesforce or Saster, I think about like uh, Jason who created Saster. Like, I mean, I've run him in the hallways and sometimes he's on stage. Most of the time yeah, he isn't, yeah, but yeah. I'm there for like what I want from that Saster experience in that community. There's so just, I, I I'd be curious on your thoughts then. Cause like, let me just take this down to a more like real estate based level. I'll look at an Instagram page just as an example of an agent who is a person and I'll see good engagement, good content, uh, comment thread is stacked with dialogue and they're just doing great. Yeah. And then I'll see a brokerage or a team and they're making content too. Mm -hmm. But I have noticed, and maybe this is only my observation that they tend to have less engagement and it seems to be a more of an arm's length removed as far as like community yeah, goes. The same Thoughts. Thing. Yeah. Heart or lack thereof. Okay. Like last, uh, last night. Yeah. Last night I'm, I'm on my Instagram, right. And it, only cause I wanted to capture a moment with my mother-in-law cause we were playing a game together and we were like a team playing against three other people. And it's just these like funny little things that people are like, <laughs> literally it's like more cowbell. Right. Like I, I want more cowbell. Right. Like it's, I get, I want more Nana. Yeah. It's human. Yeah. yeah. Right. And like, I, I didn't do it because I know the, I know that the human side, I do it because I love my mother-in-law yeah, yeah. and she's a part of my life and she lives with me. Just like my team is a part of my life. Just like my friends are yeah. a part of my life. Like every, you know, every person I get to collaborate is like, so you just, I show that and people get that. And I think that's what the, a lot of brands miss. Yeah. I think you, cause I don't know. I would have to look at those examples to really understand what, why it's working, but it's probably somewhat like your formula. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's got to be feel real. Yeah. Cause sometimes like, yeah, I see the same thing and I, and I think why isn't their engagement bigger? Um, but then I look at the content and I see why, like there's something missing from mm -hmm. it. So a lot of it's like, um, just sold, just sold, just sold, just sold, yeah, just, yeah, sold yeah. just sold, oh, God, just sold, just I sold. I want to see your listings. But so it's all like at the end of the day, I don't. I I, I guess I come back to this. Great for you. Like that's what you've done. You've mm -hmm. done. You've done. But I don't see how any of it plays to me. Yeah. So like but I there, think, but there's ways that you could do that, which is the before and after. It's the story. It's the you know. The, it's the hero's journey. It's the welcome inside home inside of the yes. yeah. Like it's it's opening the door and seeing somebody you know that tearful moment of being handed their keys is a just sold card. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? Like there, there are ways to do it, but what happens is, and, and listen, for everyone listening right now, I know one of the things you're thinking is I am so damn busy right now. How do I get all this stuff done? I feel that. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. And, I, and I do too. So, you know, so in just the spirit of that, it's sometimes just before you just hit that button to get a standard just sold card out, actually like put your hand on your heart. This is what I like. Maybe this is gonna sound super woo woo, you know, but like I put my hand on my heart and I think about the client. I think about the experience. I go back to when they first got started, the first time I met them, 
the hurdles, the mm-hmm. things that they went through, the problems, the, the, I, I'm thinking of like I, Josh Rubin, like who I've worked with for like 11 years. Like we've had tearful moments during our time together, like really heartfelt. I put my hand on my heart and I think about that. Mm. And then it's like, okay, now what do I want to say? What's the story behind this sold? I have you a twofold. I, I, I am. And I, I have a twofold comment on that. Yes. Not one, but, yeah, but two. two. If you're pushing out, see, this is again, how brands would think. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody puts out something called just sold. Yeah. So I want to, I want, there's a story around a just sold, like a house just sold, but is that the only story? Of course not. Of course not. So like if you're a busy agent running around doing busy things and don't have time to do, then I would say, okay, well then you're just an an agent doing your thing and not worrying about the brand thing. If you're a brand, then you'd be going, well, we just can't put out a just sold thing because that's, that tells a story about something that happened. Right. But it's not storytelling around and you pulled out this book building a story brand, but like. I think this is like an entry level concept to a much bigger idea, but like that's not the story people really want to hear that something's sold. Agents believe that that's right. the story. And right. now what I'm seeing, it's even one layer above that, which is just sold 30% over asking, right. which to me is radiating a very negative message out into the community. A brand would think about that. A brand mm-hmm. would say, is that what we want? How's this going to resonate with people? Yeah, how did, like, yeah. How's that going to affect buyers? If buyers keep right. seeing that that's happening every time I put something out, how many buyers are going to go, screw it, I, I'm out of the game. Right. So we yes, may have, we may have talked you into selling out of greed, or maybe this is the right time. But where are you going to go? That, like, where, where are you going to go? Buy? And I've got to pay 30% more. I'm with you on this. So it, it gets to my second yeah. thing, and I'll say it yeah. real quick. Um, we, I just published, uh, or I'm about to publish a piece on slogans and taglines. Hmm. Just what are they and what the difference between, yeah. um, that, that'll go out to our membership group. Yeah. You'll, you'll get I a copy. I am a member. Okay, so you will get a copy. Um, and one of the things that I write about slogans is if you're going to do a campaign slogan, um, the key difference is a tagline is a, a phrase that lives with your brand name that earmarks something your brand does that's unique to the brand. So it's about your brand. Mm -hmm. But your campaign slogan has to speak to me, the customer. And it should never say what you do. So like just sold, just listed, Mm -hmm. I do this, I do that. That is all you talking about you. And whether it's in a headline form, a slogan form, or a story form, Mm -hmm. it is hard to get people to um, invest in that because it's all about what you've done. You can spin that and tell me how that imp- would impact me. What is the benefit to me? Mm-hmm. So the best slogans, and we know what they are, you know, think different and mm-hmm. just do, do it. it. And yeah. th- these are brands telling me what I can do and what I can become if I use their product. Mm-hmm. And that is such a key like trigger in uh, expressing or building. Like you talk about the difference between two feeds. One feed is just pound, you know, chest pounding. I did this, I did that. The other feed may just be like, we'd like to invite you in, be part of this grander story that we're telling. So I think just in the, in the, this day and age, I was talking to my wife the other day and she listened to this podcast of this uh, woman who died years ago, but her granddaughter took all the recordings of the speeches she'd given over the years. Oh yeah. We talked about this. We talked about this and made a podcast out of all that. And my wife listened to it and then she made a comment to me. She was like, you'll start to notice because there was no social media when these speeches were given. Right. So she's rinse, She's saying the same things a lot. Yeah. And she can, and it's all really great stuff, but the need for content was far less than it is today. She was like, it's really like being a content creator today. Oh my God. You right. have to make a prolific amount of content in a way that 20, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, nobody had to think about. And so when you're, we're talking about these, I would call it grandiose, aspirational ideas of my brand, my belief, and all these things, I think could be highly intimidating to a lot of agents. Mm-hmm. I think you've offered a great disclaimer. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do all this yeah. until you're ready for all that. But I do think even in your social media marketing efforts, and I used marketing on purpose in that capacity, you still have to be cognizant of, okay, what is the, what is the flywheel I'm building here? Mm-hmm. Because if I get stuck in the habit of just putting, you know, graffiti bus benches, so to speak, into my Instagram, I'm actually turning people away in that process. So I just, I, want, I don't have a solution per se, but I think that the conversation is, how do I get really, really um, strategic about 
my content mix and I use the mix like there's this revolution. I'm going to do a rotation of content. That is true to me, but also allows me to get into a process where I'm not drowning with my limited time to do any kind of marketing for my business. That was a big yeah. one of words. No, I, I think the thing, you, the thing that's missing, even in the marketing, is just give people a reason to care. And so like, because you have to create a lot of content. You do. I mean, I don't know. I don't create a lot of content anymore. I used to write a lot of blogs. I don't write any blogs anymore. Uh, I rarely tweet. I'll retweet something or I'll just write a quick little like comment on somebody's tweet. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also about like you can be very frequent or you can just be really selective and come up with just something good once in a while. But I think as long as you give somebody an anchor to find and like to feel invited into the feed or into – so even if it's just sold, like can't you write something around – like how it sold, what you did, or just let me know that like there's still opportunity and like, you right. know. I like what the Fars do, Aaron and Krista Farr in Spokane. They call it a welcome home post. And they literally, they tell the story of the folks who bought the house, how yeah, they, how they that. met, what the ups and downs were. Love and that. like the caption, they use up it's all beautiful. the characters. Mm -hmm. And they do, now they do just sold posts too. It's not that they don't have those things. Mm -hmm. Is that it's not only those things because I also believe social proof is a critical factor. Right. Um, and I don't think we have to completely reinvent. Like I don't think a just sold post has no merit. I just think when it's the only thing you see on a feed, it's ad nauseum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my agent, if she were a typical agent and ha and posted, you know, just bought like uh, this home for X <laughs> amount of dollars. You just got the craziest neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be, I'd find that interesting. Yeah, actually. Great right. HBO show. Uh, I would you know, be like, new neighbor. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but like if she actually wrote a blog about yeah. what she did yep. to solve the problem, how many more people would she have calling her to, to like, you know what? I got the same problem he had. Right. And I need a similar solution. Right. Like I never thought of that. Like buyers and sellers don't think of anything. We just want to buy. We just want to sell. Like solve my problem. Yeah, just like push a button, magic happen. We don't even know what our problems are necessarily. Yeah. Like right. an agent, if you're in the business, you should already know. Yes. And I think therein lies so much opportunity for I agree. basic marketing or basic branding. Okay, I think this show is a complete failure. Totally. I really thought you guys were going to debate more. I disagree. <laughs> Because <laughs> when we were in Nashville, not that it got fiery, but maybe it was just because, you know, we've got 200 of these extraordinary ages. Like, whoa, whoa. Well, I really didn't know Jason. So like, right. I spoke and then you just said, hey, I want you to debate with Jason. I'm like, yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. It's like we had, didn't have a, uh, I didn't know where you were coming from. Yeah. So yeah. I've studied you since. Yes. Now I have a much deeper appreciation for what you bring to the well, table. I appreciate that. I think our two too. things totally work together. You yes. need both. Yes. I, I, I think mm. what we didn't discuss at our little debate is yeah. the when component. Right. When does this make sense right. to go to that level? Right. Because right. um, you know, most of the folks I focus on are, I want to get my business upscaled right away. And then through that process, you discover your brand, build your yeah. brand. I'll tell you this quick story. Mm -hmm. Agent comes to me. Right before Thanksgiving, saw me speak somewhere. It was like 10 years ago. And uh, she said, look, I want to reach out. Um, it was like, it was either Thanksgiving day or the day before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I'm about to launch my brokerage. I left being an agent. I'm starting a new brokerage. And now I'm questioning everything. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I'm like, because she saw me speak and reached out, yeah. I feel like, Part of my belief system is, is if you've got the wherewithal to reach out, then you deserve help. Yes. And so I go, well, yes. wh where do we, what's your biggest issue? Because I'm not sure the name I came up with is the right name. So uh, the name was Elite. And they were, mm -hmm. they were Elite. Yes. But I go, okay, so what, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? What does Elite mean? What do you produce? Because when I see Elite, I'm already thinking, well, that's probably not for me because I'm not an Elite person. So you might not be the right brokerage for me as a realtor. You may not be the right brokerage for me as a mm -hmm. customer. She goes, oh, I didn't, I didn't even interpret it that way. Part of that was because she wasn't born in America. So English is her second language. Yes. Um, so I, I just started asking her questions like, well, why are you starting your brokerage? Yeah. Like what's, what's mm -hmm. missing in your market mm -hmm. that you feel mm -hmm. you can fill? There's, there's a whole host of questions you yes. can ask somebody to get to belief system. Well, uh, she started telling me a story. Um, and it was a story about her upbringing. 
uh, growing up in a small Spanish town on the coast of Spain, um, and just what the environment was in her family uh, and how welcoming her family was. And like people would just come in and out of her house all the time. And like, I'm like, now I'm getting a sense of like what this is all about. So I'm like, you can't call this elite. And your whole positioning is all wrong. Right. And so like there wasn't a brand there yet. Maybe we could even call this just early stage marketing, but your brand name is like, you're still marketing your company with your name. So I said, give me a couple of days. Um, but I asked her a question. I said, was, is there a word that was commonly used in your household? Like it's something that like would, would, and it turned out to be, there was a word. Mm. And it was the word that her mother would say every time somebody would come into the house, they would say this word. And I'm like, that's the name of your company. That's, yeah. uh, because the word translates to welcome. So she calls her company and you may even know it. She may even be a client of yours, Alante. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. So her company's called Alante. Now, you think about Susanna Higuera and yeah. Alante versus Elite. Right. Uh, no comparison. No comparison. No. And it's true yeah. to her nature. Right. And what I discovered through talking to her was like her deep passion uh, and sensuality around life. And she's just all in on everything. Yeah. Like Elite just was hands off cold. Yeah. Um, and Alante is just like her family, welcoming and come on in. And it's, it's, I think it served her really well. I haven't spoken to her in a while, so I don't know where she's at in her business. But like, I think even early on, if you don't know what it is, it may not hurt to explore it a little bit with somebody, not necessarily me, mm -hmm. but like, if you're listening to this and call me, of course, I'll talk to you. But like, there is a way in but which- only call on Thanksgiving. <laughs> only call, yeah. Only call the day of a holiday because right. you know I'll be available. He'll answer. Yeah, because yes, you'll be hanging out. Um, but like there is and his number is five 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 five. Well, we can give it out. Like, I don't care. But th there's a pathway yes. towards at least getting something. So like you're just not off in the wild unless there's nothing there. Because a lot of times there's nothing there, and you need to be in business for like you said three, yeah. four, five years right. yeah. before right. you figure out like where you fit. That's yeah. that's my takeaway. Like I yeah. love that's a beautiful story. I love that. Um, and I was thinking about the difference between like a prototype and a product. And some things, some people are still in a prototype mode right now, mm -hmm. and they're not ready to go to like it's not done yet. Yeah. It's still being built and painted. Apple um, was that. Yeah. Apple had no brand in the beginning. Right. They were just a kit. Making, but, you know, yeah, and I think what's I think what's important is I think there should be moments of self reflection okay. built okay, in. But I want to say, but they yeah. built a quality product, right? Yes. And you build a, a quality product or a quality solution for consumers, you get that magic of product market fit, and now people are coming it in. Started left and right with something, because, yeah. It right. started with yeah. something, yeah. and right. it may not have been a belief system, but it was something, right? Um, and it was always a good question I would ask people. It's like, just why did you do, why yeah. beyond the money? Mm -hmm. Because you saw this on TV or yeah. because whatever, like why, why do you want to do this? Because yeah. if you really want to help people, you could be a doctor, you could be a right. nurse, you could be a lawyer, like why? Go work in a food kitchen, like yeah. do something. And real estate's yeah. hard, man. So yeah. like, right. what are you bringing to the table? Well, there's always something there, there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think what's like, I think a lot of people would take an easy road answer. Why did you get to realize I love houses. I love helping yeah. people. Love like design. that's not enough. No. no. You've got like when you push to the Elante, like mm -hmm. you push to that deeper level mm -hmm. of memory and mm -hmm. how it all ties together. That's, I think that's where a brand, like that's a where true a brand, brand gets born. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, great debate. Or, or locking in the identity. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. So we've covered a lot of ground here. This is super fun. Now we have to yeah, go. Yeah, we'll have to do round two. We have, definitely. Well, we have to do more work too. So yeah. uh, I'm just curious with the people out there. Uh, do you want Mark's email? Let me get Mark's email. You could reach me. At, well, am I supposed to say what well, my yeah. name is? Uh, Mark, yeah. M-A-R-C. Yeah, M-A-R-C, very at important. At 1000 watt. 1000. W-A-T-T yeah. yeah. dot net. Or, if I can, invite yeah. you to become a member of our oh, community. Yes. yes. At 1000 watt inside, yeah. where like now you're inside getting tons of stuff that yeah. we're- it's great material. The, yeah. the, the, Are you a member too? I or am, do you get it through time? I get I see, I've seen quite a bit of it. That's, I need to become yeah. an actual member. Yes. Well, either way, that's totally yeah. cool. Like yeah. you have a right yeah. to share what yeah. we give. I you. share it with the executive yeah. team. I'm like, as you should. This like yeah. the the loyalty report from last year is still one of my all time. Favorites. We do I'm consumer surveys. We're yep. finding out what consumers right. want, what they right. don't want. We're doing. A, Brian does this uh, quarterly real estate 
um, update yeah. and really gives you the lay of the land of the whole entire industry. Yeah. We do one-on-one so you can meet with myself or Brian one-on-one for not, not coaching. Um, but like we can you idea know, exchange ideas I'm thinking about this, man. What do you think? Oh, we I, just gave somebody like an idea for free. Like words. it's well, not for free. It's part of the membership, yeah. but like yeah. you, you get it on these one-on-ones. There's a lot of benefit there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I am a, I, I got the email and I was like, Ruby, <laughs> signing up for this. We are coming up on <laughs> the end of our first year. Yeah. We've got 250 members. Congrats. Um, so we're not like looking to, but no. we're going to do an event and our events are very different. Uh, yes, they uh, are. Yes. Uh, the the unconference, as we're calling it. Yes, um, yes. That phrase has started to be used a little. bit. Yeah, so maybe it won't. We won't Uncon. use it. Yeah. Well, we've yeah. always referred to it as a show, right? Like it's a, a show. Like it's a mix of Ed Sullivan, Dick Cavett, and Ted. Right. Right. Um, the guy that you had there um, a while back, the sneaker right. collector. No, I was thinking about the guy that gave us the. He was the cinematographer. Oh my god! Who yeah. gave us perspective on everything from like. You know, how, how to like set the frame. He's a yeah. known then, Hollywood it, director. Right. And then as soon as you're like, you're like, wait a minute, that's every frame I've ever seen in the movie. He did it all in like five minutes. There's only like six frames. They all look like this. And he did each one yeah. in front of us with like a John frame Harrison. around him. And I was like, oh, that was brilliant. That was John Harrison, yeah. uh, who has written and directed over 30 feature films. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get Phil Lesh from the Grateful Dead, who I know personally, to speak. Um, it, you just, only if you guys both have guitars and you jam you know, like that, would just we've be, done that before, but I like, uh, it would, he's got such a great riff on life. Right. And, um, but it's hard to, it's hard to, as you know, it's hard yeah. to get. Yeah. Um, but we're planning it in 2023. Okay. Um, I'm in. And what about, do they know how to reach you? I am better at Jason Pantana everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. Drop the everywhere, just everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we got to wrap this up. This was super, super fun. Um, Always grateful. Leave a comment. You got to like, you got to subscribe and maybe think about who you should send this to. There might be someone that is outside of the real estate industry Mm. because a lot of what we discussed today was just branding and marketing and and building Mm -hmm. an identity and becoming known as something. And I would argue that's for Every, every college kid right now is trying to figure out yeah. like how to go beyond just a resume, right? Like, what do you really care about? What do you believe? Like all those same questions, I think resonate for that person as well. But that's my two cents. What do you think? Give us some comments. Let us know. Fellas, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, thank we're you. out. <laughs>